the state of Arkansas has got some good fishing in it. And we're going to explore some new territory on this week's show. Let's go fishing right now in the Woo Pig Suey State. Let's fish is on the air. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Hi everyone and welcome in to this week's episode of Let's Fish TV. We've got big white bass in store for you in the next half hour. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'd like to welcome you in for my first time ever to Greer's Ferry Lake. It's located about an hour north of Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's loaded with many species of game fish, but this white bass thing is going to be really big today. Now, I'd like to show you my brand new low Stinger 198 aluminum fishing boat. This is the Cadillac of fishing boats. You've seen it on a couple of episodes of our show already. It's got 83 huge square feet of deck fishing space up top. It's got some of the best upholstered fishing chairs to ride in in the entire industry. It's got all the toys on it, all the dash instrumentation. It's got an all welded hull, everything you could want in a top end aluminum fishing boat. Now, as for Greer's Ferry Lake, we're located right now at Fairfield Bay Marina. More on that later. This lake has got all kinds of fish in it, hybrids and big blue cats and crappie and walleye. In fact, the world record came from here. But in particular, we're after some of the giant white bass that swim in this lake. Some of the biggest white bass in the entire southern United States are in those waters, and we're after those coming up right now. While we're out doing that, we're taking you around the region for this week's fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters on lakes, rivers, and bays right near you. Right now, the Low Stinger 198 goes into Greer's Ferry Lake. Next time you see me, I'm chasing big white bass. Right now, let's get this party started back at the studio in your weekend planner. Hey everyone, these salooner tables are showing fair fishing conditions both days this weekend. Peak daytime activity will start at 251 on Saturday and 355 on Sunday afternoon. Nighttime action picks up at 226 on Saturday and 320 early Sunday morning. Expect the sun to rise at 634 and set at 817, and evenings will feature a moon that is 93% visible. We'll be right back to check all of the current fishing reports from throughout the area. Plus, I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler David Mullins to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. Stick with us. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lorance, America's number one fish finder. Lose, feel the difference. And by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Get our free fishing guide at orangebeach.com. Man, they are so thick down there. Look at the size of that bad boy right there. got fish on my graph right now like crazy. One of those ought to bite. Swim that rally grab up like that. There he is, got him. All right, there's fish. Oh, he's a fighter. Come up Greer's Ferry White. Down there deep, oh yeah, that's a good one. Kind of got the bends from being down so deep. I pulled him up out of 40 feet of water. Look at that fat female right there. Man, there's one that, I guess a late spawner that hasn't spawned yet. Look at the size of that bad boy right there. Big old fat belly on her right there, full of eggs. Well, welcome everybody to Greer's Ferry. My first time to uh, ever be at this lake. So let me uh, give you a few statistics about Greer's Ferry. We've Got out here and kind of got oriented a little bit, looked around, found a few white bass, and I'll explain those to you, but this lake is about 40,000 surface acres. It's actually two lakes, 
joined by a canal in the middle called the Narrows. And there was actually an old town called Higdon, Arkansas, that was in the bottom of those Narrows and it kept flooding. So they eventually said, well, forget it. We'll move up on the hill where it won't flood. They dammed the lake up and now the old Higdon is down in the bottom of that Narrows area. The buildings and everything still intact down there. But uh, anyway, the lake is a real clear lake. It's very deep. This lake is over 300 feet deep. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama Fishing Report. This week's report is brought to you by TH Marine. Uh, one of my favorite companies in the fishing boating space because they make products that make my life better. They make my life easier, um, make my boating more enjoyable, and especially my fishing. Go over to thmarine.com, check out their product line. You'll thank me later. Hey, uh, tons going on right now. Big crappie being caught in Mississippi. Uh, you can go to Grenada, Sardis, Enid, Washington. Um, I know I'm leaving some of the better ones out, but that's just the ones that I know what's going on at, and they are biting. In Alabama, man, Smith Lake is on fire. Uh, my buddy David Kilgore down there just, he keeps putting these big giant spots up on social media. Um, he is social distancing in his bass boat, and he's having a great time doing it. You catch a lot of fish there right now on a swim bait. You can catch a lot of fish on a topwater bait or a wake bait. In Tennessee, I'm gonna take you up to Real Foot Lake in the extreme northwest corner. Uh, my buddies down there at Blue Bank um, I just have an incredible operation, uh, place to stay, place to eat, and some of the best guides in the country. The, the crappie fishing is on fire right now. The bluegill fishing is heating up. All, right, all you got to do is just take the time to get here. Really, everything here is happening. We'll see you here when you get here. Take care. God bless. I've got white bass literally just blacking my screen out right now. I'm going to show you a shot of this in a second, but I bet there, there, there. got him. Man, they are so thick down there. And I just dropped my grub. There you go. Boy, you pull them up out of that deep water and they don't fight much when they get up top. Oh, look at that fat dude. Wow. These are some giant white bass. I'm, so I'm, I'm out here watching my electronics. Got my Lawrence Elite TI2. And down he goes. And I'm drifting across these schools. And that time I actually took my jig and dropped it below my trolling motor and just started feeding line down. And I could actually see it going down on my trolling motor. In fact, I could actually see it right now dropping it down until the level the fish are. Now, we're out here in really deep water, 70 feet deep, but the fish are only about 20 to 30 feet down, something like that. So I'm watching my bait go down on my fish finder, on my sonar, until it gets to the level where the fish are. And then I'm slowly just lifting it, swimming it through those schools and making that swim tail on the back of that Jean LaRue rally grub, just swim up through the schools. And that's the way I'm catching these fish. Stay with us. Swimming it through those schools. There's one. Got it. That's a pretty good white bass. Nothing wrong with that one. Well, I've got my bail open, letting that big heavy jig head go down through those schools. Hey everybody, welcome back to Greer's Ferry Lake here in Arkansas. We're catching a bunch of big white bass today and I'm using two different techniques to do that. Now, one, I'm actually seeing the fish on my graph and dropping it straight down vertically into them. But then when I get in these big schools, I'm making big long casts and you gotta be real patient, and let it go way down. These fish are 20 to 40 feet down. And then once it gets down, I'm just swimming it through. Swimming it through those schools. There's one. Got him. And if you'll, if you'll suspend that bait, don't let it go to the bottom. Keep it between the surface and the bottom. You can swim it through the schools horizontally and those fish will bite it. There he comes. That's not one of the bigger ones really. He spit up a little shad, two little shad. I'll show you what they're feeding on here while I'm at this. Right here, I'll pick up one of these just to give you some idea of what these fish are eating. 
There's one. Okay, there's, that's a pretty good white bass. Nothing wrong with that one. And let him go back. There's what they're feeding on. And that's a little tiny thread fin shad. And so there's my Jean LaRue Rally Grub. It's a little bigger than the bait actually. And I've got a big heavy head on there. That's a half ounce jig head. So that's one technique is I'm just making these big long casts. I'm drifting over the top of the schools and making big long casts like this, leaving my bale open, letting that bait feed down to about the level I think the schools are. Flip that bale over and then I'm swimming horizontally through the schools and it's working real well. Lots of big whites. Weather and water are warming all along the southeast coast and fish are turning on too. I'll have all the details, but first this from our good friends at Mirror Lure. Mirror Lure, building quality saltwater lures since 1937, including the new line of Mirror Dean plugs. Turn on the bite anytime, tie on a mirror lure. Well, Captain Jack McGowan up in Savannah says that whiting fishing has been just outstanding in the sounds and the river mouths in that Savannah area, especially uh, the Savannah River Channel and the jetties at the mouth of the Savannah River. Uh, Jack says that the flounder fishing has been very good around the inlets and the open water sounds toward the open Atlantic. The uh, flounder are just now starting to move in. There's been some really good catches made. A uh, cobia is starting to show up along the George coast. Uh, most of the good cobia fishing is around the near shore wrecks and reefs. These are going to be 5 to 10 or 12 miles offshore. Uh, Captain Patrick Garmerson in Alabama says trout fishing is improving, there's, but there's lots of small fish. You've got to wade through plenty of little ones to catch a couple of big good keepers. Popping corks and live shrimp work real well, but if you want bigger fish, topwater plugs is the way to go early in the morning for bigger trout. In Mississippi, there's plenty of white trout uh, are available in the bays and in the river mouths in Mississippi. Good eating fish there. Well, that's it for the southeast coast. Get out on the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boat. Welcome to Low Country. That is a little piglet of a white bass right there. What a specimen. Oh, shoot. Oh, they're biting it like crazy. Hey, everybody, we're still on Greer's Ferry here in Arkansas, and I've moved out to the middle part of the lake. There are just some big old schools of fish hanging around out here chasing shad, chasing bait fish. There's one. Got him that time. And the birds kind of clued me in. I saw gulls out here diving at the water. Oh, look at that pull. Man, they are giving me... All I want on spinning tackle, these are big old whites. Look at that dude. Big old fat white bass. Yes. Well, I mentioned that there are lots of species of fish in Greer's Ferry Lake. Let me mention a few of the others. There are these white bass. Then there's the cross between the white and the striper, the hybrid striped bass, and they grow huge in this lake. In fact, the state record came out of here, 27 pounds at one point until it was finally broken somewhere else. But there are a lot of 15 to 20 pound hybrid stripers that swim in here. It's a great walleye fishery, probably the best walleye anywhere in the state of Arkansas. And uh, it's got lots of smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and it is a very good crappie lake. They catch thousands of great big crappie out of this lake. We're staying in Fairfield Bay, which is a fantastic little community just on the north shore of Greer's Ferry Lake. It is a really cool place to come visit and a great place to come bring the family if you want to come on vacation and fish for all the different species of fish that swim here, including these big, fat white bass that we're catching today. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolina's Report this week brought to you by Crazy System Marina. Remember, right now, still during this quarantine time, stay-at-home time, our hours have changed 
Please visit CrazySisterMarina.com to find out more information about the things that we're still offering and when we'll be opening back up for normal business and booking charters to get you out on the water to enjoy some of the incredible offshore fishing. And that's what we're going to talk this week. A lot of great things going on in the Atlantic here off of North and South Carolina. You know, we've been going through a lot. The quarantine has been terrible. Um, the kids out of school. One place that we've all been able to get to get away from all of it has been on the water. Salt water has been incredible. I'm going to tell you, the nearshore reefs are loaded up right now. Weak fish, you've got a lot of Spanish mackerel showing up and the bonito as well. Get out, troll with some spoons or troll with a mackerel rig. You have a lot of luck on your local reefs, the Jim Caudle Reef, Pauly's Reef, the Three Mile Reef here. Lots of great reefs along the coastlines in the Carolinas to get out and enjoy that. Also, the offshore bite, we got warm water finally rolling through, lots of sargasm weed in it, and the dolphin are showing up. The Carolina gold that likes to show up this time of the year is starting to show up. Get out there, small boon feathers, um, anything, anything out there to mimic some of those baits that are out there, those flying fish that are around that grass, you're going to have a great time and some big numbers with the mahi-mahi this time of the year. This has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. You can see we've got birds working all over the place out here. They're diving down on these little threadfin shad, and underneath all those birds, are all those shad and in with those shad are these white bass that we're catching. Now, I'm actually up over the top of a school right now. You can see it on my Lawrence Elite TI-2 here. I've got it just in my regular 2D sonar and I'm drifting right up over the top of these fish and dropping the bait right down in it. There's one and they're biting it almost every time I get it down to the, this school is up a little bit shallower. Look at the belly on that one, man. That is a little piglet of a white bass right there. What a specimen. They're just out here feeding up on these shad and just fattening themselves up. You can do this year round, literally. There's not a month of the year that you can't come catch these white bass. You've got to follow the migration. In the spring, they run up the three major forks, the Devil, uh, Devil's Middle and South Forks is where they go up to spawn. Then the rest of the year, they come back down in the main lake and they're out here suspended off the river channel out in this pretty deep water. You've got to use your electronics and find them or hire a good guide and they can put you on top of them. But it is unbelievable how many you can catch and how big they are here at Greer's Ferry. We are having a time. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Place your glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Hey everybody and welcome back to the show. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Tommy wants to know, who is your hero and why? For an answer, we asked Bassmaster Elite Angler, David Mullins. So again, yeah, I'll get tore up thinking about it, but my mom's definitely my hero. And uh, like I said, she sacrificed a lot for me. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for her. I remember when I was 18 year old, we had a little, old, <laughs> I can't even talk about it, I'm sorry. But we had a little old, um, aluminum boat and she sacrificed her time to, we traded in, she actually bought me a brand new bass boat when I was 18 years old. <laughs> I can't, can't believe I'm getting this story up about it, but anyway, that's she's my hero. Like I said, I wouldn't be able to do this. She sacrificed money and time for me, and got me, encouraged me all the time to fish local tournaments. And uh, you know, she's a wonderful person. Anybody you talk to, you know, they all love her, and uh, she's just a very she sacrifices for everybody else, and that's why she's my hero. Thank you, David, and of course, a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there this weekend. 
If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. Welcome back to the beautiful Fairfield Bay Marina at Greer's Ferry Lake, about an hour north of Little Rock, Arkansas, home of great fishing. It's time right now for this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. He is John Walton of Garner, North Carolina, showing a seven pound largemouth bass he caught at Falls Lake, North Carolina. If you'd like to have a chance to have your big fish shown on television, just go to our website at letsfishtv.com and right on the front page, you'll get the instructions to enter your fish and your photo in the Big Catch of the Week contest. You could have your fish shown on television. Next up, here's some of the gear that we use to catch these giant white bass here at Greer's Ferry and you can use to catch them where you live. And it all begins with the brand new Lou's Custom Speed Stick Rod. It's black in color and it's got the new G-Clutch technology in the handle that allows the spinning reel to screw together. The handle comes completely together and fits perfectly in the palm of your hand, puts you closely in touch with the blank so that you can feel the strikes. Now this is a seven foot medium action model. You don't want to use the real light action model for these big white bass, especially if you're coming here. And it's perfectly matched with the Lou's Speed Spin Spinning Reel. Perfect combination. You want to look for both of those as a combo. And then for the bait, we used about a half ounce lead jig head with a hard stainless steel hook in it. And we used the Jean LaRue Rally Grub in kind of a chartreuse pearl color that was deadly on an overcast cloudy day like we had most of the day today on these big white bass that were out deep. America is a great place to live, but I'm sure you already knew that. I recently went on a mission trip with my church to a little town called Haco in Costa Rica. It's not normally considered to be a third world country down in Costa Rica, but the living conditions that I saw firsthand were truly unbelievable. In fact, I won't even begin to try to describe those because until you see it with your real eyes, you really can't believe the way some people are still living in this day and age as close as Central America. Needless to say, I came home with a brand new appreciation for all the good things that God blesses us with here in this great country we call America. My takeaway from the whole trip after I got home was this, never, never, never take any of the good things we have in America for granted. Thanks for joining us today from beautiful Greer's Ferry Lake in Arkansas, about an hour north of Little Rock. And our special gratitude to the folks at the Cobblestone Inn and Suites in Fairfield Bay on the North Shore of Greer's Ferry Lake. They've got a fantastic new place to stay, beautiful accommodations, the convention center next door, a great restaurant, really everything you could want in one location at the Cobblestone Inn and Suites in Fairfield Bay, Arkansas. And of course, our thanks to John and the folks here at Fairfield Bay Marina as well. They've got a great place, everything you could need in one location. You can rent a kayak or a boat or lots of ski equipment. You can buy souvenirs and food inside, just a great place. And here's some contact information for you if you'd like to contact Bud Lady Guide Service, Terry Hargrove and her crew. There's the contact information on your screen. She'll guide you for the white bass, the hybrids, the large mouth, the small mouth bass. And then if you want walleye as a specialty, our good friend Scott Pink will take you and catch some of these walleye. And we actually did go out today and did a little walleye fishing once the sun came out. We did manage to catch a couple of small walleye. Contact them at the information you see on your screen. From Greer's Ferry Lake in Arkansas until next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying let's fish, be safe, have fun. Bye bye y'all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fishing tips, how-to videos, big fish catches, and full episodes of our Let's Fish TV show, be sure to subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Good fishing out there.